Have you ever looked at one of these big old hunks of Japanese engineering from the year ranges of 1988 to 2000 and thought, how do you get to the carburetor? Well, I'll show you how to get to the carburetor and remove it in this video, so stay tuned. Hey guys, Octane Restorations. We are back with a 1988 through 2000 Goldwing GL 1500 video tutorial. This tutorial is going to be how to get to and remove the carburetor on a 1988 through 2000 GL 1500. Now for the 88s and 89s, this procedure is just going to be a tiny bit different. They have a few different air hoses, stuff like that. But all in all, as far as removing the fairings and everything like that, this procedure should be pretty much the exact same. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first, I want to go over some of the tools that you'll need for this job. Now this one isn't a necessity. You can do it with Phillips, but every Phillips that you see on Japanese motorcycles, they're not Phillips. They're called Japanese Industrial Standard, JIS screws, if they have a little dot on them. It's a tiny bit different than a Phillips. It's enough that it'll cause the screws to cam out if you try to use a Phillips on a JIS screw. I understand this is expensive, but it's an investment. You know, every Japanese motorcycle that you rebuild, you can use these for. I understand $50 for screwdriver sets out of some people's budget. So for $10, you can get these drive bits. They pretty much work the same, but it is an investment. You're going to need a long Phillips screwdriver to get the carb boots. I like this set because it has the big flathead, the slotted, use it as a pry bar. To get the carb off, a fuel line remover for 10 bucks on Amazon, and then these pliers. I like this assortment set of long needle nose pliers for 30 bucks off eBay. Uh, having these with the 45 degree offset, 90 degree offset, and then that one with the circle, they help so much getting the hoses back on the airbox. So, one of my best purchases, last thing, is this mini ratchet for drill bits. Man, it works amazing. Three dollars, you need it. If you are going to go through this trouble, I would recommend rebuilding the carburetor, including new gaskets, just to ensure that they don't leak. First step, you gotta take the seat off. You also got to take the plastic radio cover cowl and both of the two little plastic pieces that cover the forks by the handlebars. There's also that one piece that pops in from the ignition that's just held on by a few grommets but pull all that off this is what it should look like next you got to take off both of the side fairings and the bottom outer fairings there's also those two little pieces down there that just are held on by little tabs you got to pop those out you got to take this reverse lever off too which is held by an allen key and i'll show you how to get that off you get it off by it's got that rubber grip on it and you put it in the engaged position and you pull that rubber off. Just gotta reach up underneath it, pull it off, pretty easy process. But, so, this is a pretty, pretty big task. There's a lot of stuff that's gotta get disassembled. These pockets that normally you'd keep cassette tapes in, you gotta remove those too. There's this little bolt right here. This is a special bolt, do not lose it. It's a 10 millimeter, but that's one of, what one of the fairings has a little grommet that sits on it. So I'm just gonna hit on it real quick right here. I mentioned it in other videos. Before attempting this, I would get some JIS screwdrivers, which stands for Japanese Industrial Standard. It's like a Phillips head, but it doesn't cam out like a Phillips head does. I'm gonna make a video on these in more detail in the future. But most of these Japanese motorcycles, it's all they use, and it's denoted by a little dot on the top of the screw and nearly every one of these screws has it. I believe I paid around 25, 30 bucks for a JIS one, two, and three. You know, a Phillips one, two, three. You can kind of see it a little better here. That little dot on the head of the screw. But I've got a better picture that I'm gonna show right here. In the bottom right hand corner, you see it has that little dot. That just denotes that it's a JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard screw. I personally, have stopped using Phillips. I use these for pretty much everything. I experience way less cam out with these JIS screwdrivers 
just due to their design they're made to grip better you can also apply more torque so for loosening stuff you know I can use these whereas normally I'd have to use a impact but there's another even on the petcock it has them there's another example I just couldn't get the camera to focus if you watched my other videos this would be about the gold wings just slowed down so there's one Phillips that you got to remove right there and then you can pull those trim pieces off right there I'm getting the reverse lever off again you pull that rubber boot off and there's an Allen head I believe it's like a seven or eight millimeter it's pretty decent size you just unscrew it and it pops off the reverse lever has a little piece of metal that goes back in a certain way so be sure that you insert it correctly whenever you reinstall it I've got a little tub to keep all my screws in see these pieces just pop off now this one the where you would normally hold like cassette tapes it's four Phillips four JIS screws whenever I say Phillips I mean JIS <laughs> but pull those four I replace all the screws and then there's two more JIS screws holding the inner fairing on and there's also one more screw holding the inner fairing on underneath that outer bottom fairing so you got to remove the reflector and those plastic pieces to expose the screws three of them right there that's the only screws it's held on there's a little tab that keeps it on in the front and then once you take that off there will be a little screw that you can undo right there and that allow you pull that inner fairing off again it's pretty simple once you know what you're doing if this is your first time doing it I would recommend videoing everything labeling all your screws everything like that you can disconnect all the electricals and hoses and everything like that but I just like to set it on the engine covers we've got the other set off this side's pretty much an exact same there's a few differences so to remove this cap on the cassette player you use a key to open it but to get to that back screw you might have to remove the I believe that's a headlight adjustment or a windshield adjustment knob just depends on which bike you have yeah to get that little pocket out so again here I'm just going over replacing screws if it's not holding it down so you see the bottom one I can't replace because it's holding the inner fairing so I have a little bucket I put them in but I would recommend either you know lining them up in the order that you took them out or replacing them when you can like I'm doing here found something was disconnected we're just going to connect that back right quick <laughs> didn't even charge the customer for that <laughs> always try to do the best I can so again just video yourself if this is your first time doing it I got a cheap GoPro off Facebook Marketplace the first time I restored a motorcycle and I literally would just set it up behind me and record so that way whenever I disassembled it, you know, I had clear video evidence of what I put where. So reassembly was way easier. I had a laptop out there with me the whole nine yards. But just replace your screws, save you some time, put them in tubware containers that are labeled or even plastic bags. So to remove this interfering, like the other side, there's these two screws right here. There's that one 10 millimeter screw that is longer that the battery cover connects to. The one, you know, the cover just pops out, but one of the grommets is actually that screw. And then there's a 10 millimeter screw that connects kind of over by where the gas cap in the seat is. And there's the one inside the bottom outer fairing. So, you know, total there's only about five or six screws holding this on. Just got to make sure you get them off. If you're trying to pull and you're having great difficulty, <laughs> stop and look for more screws. You don't want to break any of these plastic tabs off or anything. So again, two of these covers just pop off. 
the battery cover right there. And then that one pops off too. It exposes some more of them screws. And then it's just get the JIS screwdriver and <laughs> go to disassembling. Again, pop those two trim pieces off, those trim covers. Take off those plastic pieces so that you can expose the JIS screws, the three of them. Connecting the upper outer fairing to the lower outer fairing. That was that 10 millimeter I was telling you about where I was just at. Get that one JS screw, pet your dog. And right here I'm seeing how difficult it was to remove the electricals and since this is a special edition, it's got the onboard air compressor and everything like that, so I'm just going to leave it connected. It is supported by the engine cover, so it's really not a big deal. Next, we're going to go take off the air box. It's got six, eight screws, JIS screws. But you got to take off around it. There's a little intake on the back of the air box that's held on by a clip. You just got to, that metal clip right there, you just got to unclip it and pull it off. <laughs> that's my little boy. He's helping me narrate. So, like I was saying earlier, these videos are going to be broken down. The full removal of the carburetor, the disassemble, the cleaning and the rebuild, and the reassembly, it's going to be broken down into about five parts, just because I tried to slow it down to semi-normal time to s simulate what it would be like for y'all. Some of these are the size 3 JIS screws. So that's why I bought the 1, 2, and the 3, which are equal to your Phillips 1, 2, and 3, but they're not Phillips or JIS. There's six bolts holding down this plastic piece once you pull the air cover off. Might as well wash the air filter while you're in here. There's three hoses connected to this plastic box, two in the front, one in the back, and they are a pain to get back on. <laughs> You'll watch me struggle with them for quite a bit of time. I really recommend these long needle nose pliers. Really recommend. There's two screws in the bottom of this air box connected to some hoses. Don't take that off. It's easier just to take the hoses off and then reattach them, in my opinion. So, like I was saying, we got the air box off. We're just looking at the throttle, making sure everything's there. There is a lot to remove on this. Right now I got my hose removal pliers. So whenever I took these hoses off, I did it a certain way. I'm going to show you right here. One of them I left connected to the T and the other I left disconnected to the T. So as you can see right here, one's off the T and one still has the T attached. I did that to basically show that they're separate and which one goes where. So the one that connects to the T, you know, you see both those hoses right there. And then that other one just goes directly into that T. You can put Sharpie to mark the hoses. You can put different color zip ties, but that's just a quick way to do it. So whenever I go to reattach it, I know the one, the two hoses go to that T and that one hose goes to the, to its separate T. Also back there, there are two lines that go to the radiator that have coolant in them. Try to see if I can get a better video. But there's also a cruise control cable back there if your bike has electric cruise control. So there are a lot of things. Again, here I'm just going over the pliers. These all work great to get back there and remove some of the hose clamps. So these are really, really important. I know I mentioned not to use Phillips on this, but underneath to the car boots right here, this is how you're going to access them. And I'll try to show you better. Maybe I can get a flashlight in there. But that's where you're going to need the really long Phillips. I couldn't find a really long JIS, so a Phillips is what I had to use for it. If you shine the light down there, you'll be able to see it. So, again, got my long Phillips. 
put a light there so I can see it. And what you're unscrewing is you're unscrewing the clamp that goes to the boot on the engine. So you're just loosening it. You don't want to undo this fully. You just want to loosen it enough that the carburetor will be able to slide up, if that makes sense, that you can pull the carburetor above those boots. Now I'm using my pliers to remove the clamps on the coolant lines. I do apologize for the handlebar in the way, but right now I'm working on the choke. The choke cable is pretty easy to remove from the carburetor. It's on the back as well. So right here I'm using those slotted screwdrivers, also known as a flat blade, and I'm using it to pry the carburetor out of the boots. You don't want to pry on the bell-shaped top housing on the carburetor. You will bend them. You want to use it to pry on the sturdier pieces. So that plate that connects both of the carburetors, it's actually a pretty, pretty good place to pry. I'll go ahead and I'll show you on the other side. Again, just a long flat blade screwdriver is what I'm using. So that circular housing, you don't want to pry against that. You will bend that and you can puncture it. But the frame of the motorcycle right here, long slotted flat blade, just put it right there and then use that top plate and you just use leverage to pick it up. Top plate's sturdy enough, you're not gonna mess anything up using that top plate, it's some thick metal. So like I'm showing you right there, that's a good purchase point but just be very, very careful about using that diaphragm housing as a leverage point to, <laughs> to pry on. Because you can destroy it. I've seen it done because I've done it before. <laughs> so not on this bike, but on previous motorcycles. So good purchase point, word strong. Next, on the back of here, there are two coolant lines, like I was telling you about. Easiest thing is to just move the hose clamps off with those pliers, push them down onto the onto the lines, and then you should just be able to pull up the carburetor. It'll spill some coolant, but also back there, you got the cruise control and you got the choke. So there's the throttle right there that we're gonna have to take off. Back there, you know, you got some more hoses, stuff like that. Right here, this is the cruise control get that little mini ratchet and there's a Phillips you can take off back here and you don't even have to mess with the cables. You pull that bracket off. Yeah, right there is the cruise control. Use the mini ratchet and a Phillips too and you can just pull it off. There's the choke right there. The choke's pretty easy to get the cable out of. So you just disengage the choke, pull it, and then you can finagle the cable out with pliers. So it's loose. Whenever you want to remove a lot of this stuff, you want it loose. So like the throttle, everything like that, all those cables. It's going to be way easier to do whenever it's loose and not seated inside the car boots. So I'm just using those pliers that I was telling you about. Getting those clamps off. And then we're actually going to show you a better video of what those hoses look like. So, like I was saying, there's two of them that goes into the carburetor right there. Try not to booger the clamps, but just push the clamps down onto the hose and you'll be able to pull the carb up. And you might also use a flat blade screwdriver or some pliers to kind of push the hose down. But you want to be careful grabbing it, you don't want to puncture it, it's a booger to replace. Also, <laughs> you will leak coolant all over the place. I did not get my bucket in time, so if your coolant's full, it'll probably drain out. On the 88 it didn't at all. So, yours might, it might not, mine did, <laughs> got all over my shop. I got a little stubby right here. This will not remove the cruise control body. It's just too long, so that's where this mini ratchet comes in from Harbor Freight. If you take that little plastic piece off, you get a quarter inch drive ratchet. So, that's pretty cool. I bought two of them. One of them I took the plastic piece off and one of them I've got it on. Again, that Phillips too. That's the little Phillips I was telling you about that you just want to take off and be sure and put a lot of pressure towards this screw so that you don't strip it out. So that quarter inch drive right there, push that 
into that screw pretty heavily because you really don't want to strip it out make for a rough day but one of the best tools I've ever purchased three dollars from Harbor Freight <laughs> it is I've got probably six or seven of these things in case I lose one just because how well they work so we're gonna work on all that now I loosen another screw back here right now that has to do with the choke it holds the choke cable it's a little bracket so I just loosen it to where I can spin the bracket and get the choke cable out I believe the throttle cables you can loosen them with either an 8 or a 10 millimeter wrench maybe 10 millimeter take pictures of all your hose routing and everything like that and you've also got the idle adjustment cable that's probably routed that you're gonna have to pull out but I cover the hole with a t-shirt to not get dirt in it hopefully yours isn't this dirty <laughs> congrats you did the hard part next video is going to be the disassembly of the carb so stay tuned for that we do have one intake boot still on the carburetor it just depends whichever screw you loosen so but that's all for this video Stay tuned for the next one. This is Octane Restorations, and you have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching.